Hi, everyone. Welcome back to the latest Lessons from the Playroom podcast episode. Thank you so much for listening today with me. I am sitting in Breckenridge, Colorado in the U.S., and I am looking out a window right now at a beautiful mountain range. And just before I got on to record this, I was sitting here thinking about all of you and thinking about how many listeners there are around the world. And so I want to just begin with saying hi. Wherever you are in the world in this moment, hi. Uh, It's nice to speak with you, even though this is pre-recorded. Just know that I'm right now, I'm talking to you. I'm saying hi to you. And uh, and I'm hoping that you are doing well. And if you're not doing well today, I'm sending you a really, really big hug as I envision you, think about you, hold you, and welcome you to this latest conversation together. So today we are going to talk about body language and the importance of attuning to and understanding body language, ours, our clients, and how we can use the subtleties of body language to help us in the therapeutic space and to help us deepen our our play therapy process. And this, this topic is so relevant right now because so many of us are having to do teletherapy. So body language is huge when we start talking about teletherapy and, and attunement. So whether you are in person with your clients or you're on the computer, I hope you find this conversation meaningful. I hope you find it relevant and, and let's, let's, let's begin this conversation. So when I'm talking about body language, what I'm ultimately talking about is the activation of energy that's happening inside the body and then how that is expressed outwardly. So for example, just a minute ago when I was telling you that I'm looking out the window and literally in my mind, I am imagining you, literally. And when I was saying hello to you, If you were to observe my body language in that moment, um, I had a smile on my face. There was actually a softening around my eyes. Uh, My body felt relaxed and open. And and that would be visible to someone that was sitting here looking at me. They would look at me, looking out the window, speaking to you. And it would look like my body language was in an open stance. What that ultimately reflects is a regulated moment, a moment when I'm connected to myself. Now, there are plenty other times, for example, on my drive up here where I was in traffic, where if someone observed my body language, that's not what they would have seen. They would have seen maybe a furrowed brow. They might have seen my jaw clenched a little bit. They might have seen my shoulders hunched over, maybe my grasp on the steering wheel a little bit more. And that would have given information that I was in some kind of activated state. Um, I was going into a sympathetic aroused response to deal with the traffic, a little bit more hypervigilant, a little bit more contracted, a little bit more on edge. And so I know that probably what I'm saying here probably seems a little obvious, but, but it's really something that we have to consciously pay attention to. And I'm using the word consciously purposefully because we pay attention to it whether, whether we're conscious of it or not. We are picking up on all this in our environment, but to take it and make it a conscious thing that we register that's where it really becomes useful. That's where we can actually begin to intervene and do something about it. So one of the premises for us to understand is that when we are in a relationship with our clients, as they begin to work through whatever it is that's challenging for them, their body language is naturally going to correspond with whatever the perceptions are that they're having in the moment. So if, for example, the child is thinking about something sad, right, their body is going to demonstrate the sad. 
if they're if they are thinking about or they are activated um, by an old memory of something that feels confusing, their body is going to reflect confusion in some way. If they are feeling shy or nervous, again, their body language is going to reflect this. So we are registering this. If you're in the room with the shy person or you're on the other end of the computer with the shy person, you're going to feel something, right? You're going to, you're, you're going to feel some kind of, of activation. And, and what we're, I'm tuning you into is what you're actually picking up on is the subtleties of the changes of their body language. The, it could be the, the drop in the shoulder. It could be the change in the tone of the voice. It could be the, um, you know, the, 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 the chin lowering down. It could be um, the other way. It could be all of a sudden a a moment of energetic excitement where there's a lot of movement. There's a lot of motion. Um, Maybe very quickly the child's hands just extend out really fast. The fingers just fly open really fast uh, because there's a lot of energy in the hands. It could be really anything, but the body is constantly talking. And here's what I want you to really understand and appreciate. The body never lies. So I'm going to say that again. The body never lies. The body is always revealing the truth relative to the perception that the child or the individual is having because the body language is an extension of what's happening in the child or the person's perception. So it's a kind of a cool thing when we can really sink into that to recognize that if we really want to know what's going on with someone, watch. We actually have a higher probability of understanding what's going on with someone by observing their nonverbal cues and observing the subtle shifts in their body language than by asking them the question, hey, how are you doing? Now that gives us some context if they answer it. So then we have a context to understand a little bit more what the activation means. But if we're going to just look at what's going on with somebody, you can observe someone's body language and know they're dysregulated, they're anxious, they're overwhelmed, um, they're guarded, they're sad, they're withdrawn, they are poised, They are elated. They are, and we never even have to ask someone the question. So let's talk about how you even begin to pick up on this because this is where our work comes in as clinicians. What I'm talking about ultimately is a right brain process. It's a right brain experience. So this is the same process that an attuned caregiver uses to be able to understand for example, the subtleties and the cries of their baby, you know, the, the caregiver that knows, oh no, that cry, that was the, that was the hungry cry. And then, oh, nope, that cry, that's the tired cry or that's the mad cry. But to the general observer, it may just sound like a cry of distress and may not know, they might not have picked up on the subtleties in the pitch or the subtleties in in, in the breathing patterns or whatever those little cl- clues are within the crying that let the caregiver know, ah, no, that's what that means. In addition to the cry, it's also observing, for example, in the baby, you know, the way that they are contorting their body or the, 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 the movements that are happening in their, in their limbs. And all of that comes together to give us information for what's going on with the baby. Well, the only way that the parent is able to attune to that and pick up on that um, in a way that is more accurate, because we're never 100%, let me say that a different way, we're not always accurate. And we're not always accurate because we do miss a tune. And we miss a tune for the very thing I'm about to say, which is that if I'm not connected in my own body, I'm not going to be able to pick up on those clues very well. I'm going to be trying to think about them rather than feel 
them. And that's a very different, it's, a, it's, it's a, a subtle and profound thinking a person versus feeling a person. One is a left brain process. The other is a right brain process. So how do I feel my client? How do I energetically um, attune to myself, which means how do I check in on my body language? How do I register my own activation just a little bit more so that then I can become present and aware enough, this is um, becoming, putting myself in a more regulated state, so then I can consciously now begin to pick up on the nonverbal cues that my client is offering, which goes to this next piece. If I can't do this process well, number one, I'm going to miss the attunement probably more often, which um, potentially sets my client up to feel missed, unheard, not seen. But the other part of that is I can't co-regulate well because I can't really know or have a sense that my client is at the edge of their window of tolerance and therefore needs me to step in and regulate them. I can't do what we talk about. So there's this beautiful word in somatic therapy called titration. And I, I, I just love the sound of that word, titration. And, um, and titration means the ability to, we, we go in and out and in and out. It's like we go, we take, we take one foot in the hard stuff and then we kind of back up just a little bit. And then we, we take another foot, put another foot in the hard stuff and then we, we back up just a little bit. So we go into it and then there's some relief. And we go into it and then there's some relief. Into it and some relief. And, and what that does is it helps the client not get emotionally flooded, be able to maintain or manage the intensity rather than just going, you know, um, expecting them to be able to handle everything that's arising in any given moment. If they were able to, by the way, they wouldn't be in counseling with you. The fact that they are struggling with whatever they're struggling with is an indicator that some aspect of it is outside their window of tolerance. So it speaks to even more importance of our own ability to be able to read the body language to help them be on that edge of the window of tolerance so that they integrate whatever it is more quickly, more consciously, and in a way that doesn't feel overwhelming to their own physiology and their own um, emotional, emotional world. But again, we can't do this well unless we are more aware of our own body language. So I want to spend the last piece of our time together talking about this, the, our own awareness of our own body language, because I want to normalize that so many of us, for so many reasons, have disconnected from our bodies. We maybe in our own history, maybe we experienced some type of trauma to the body where it was easier to learn um, or to not have a relationship with the body. It was too painful to be in the body. Or maybe there was abuse that happened to the body. Maybe there was medical interventions that happened to the body. Maybe we have struggled with messages about what our body is supposed to do or what our bodies are supposed to look like. And, um, and there's, and, and there's been pain associated with that. And so therefore we've, we've, we've created a disconnected relationship with our bodies. Um, maybe in terms of emotion, maybe cause you know, the body, you, the body's the holder of our emotional world. Isn't that beautiful? Um, I mean, it's the, it's the container for all of our emotionality. It's the container for, for, um, for the, for our experience and the felt sense of the richness of, of life. And when we're disconnected from it, we're disconnected from life at, at a deeper level. We're disconnected from, um, from the felt sense of, of being here and, and all that that has to offer. But what if along the way, 
as we move through the world and we express some of this, our emotions, or we, you know, had certain, you know, express behavioral expressions, physical expressions, whatever it may be. And what if we got repeated messages that it's not okay? It's not okay to feel that. It's not okay to have that physical experience. It's not, it's not okay. And therefore we learn to shut down, um, because, because it's not okay. It's too painful. So this is a common thing. I don't hear this talked very much about in graduate school, unless, unless the program is really somatically focused, but, but there's, there is this, this feeling of if we are disconnected from our bodies in the, as therapists, where we are a bit of fish out of water because it's, it is within our bodies that we're receiving the most amount of information about what's going on with our clients. And so our bodies in, in such a big way are our greatest asset, our greatest tool. So our own relationship with our bodies and the development of a relationship with our bodies, it's a big deal for us as clinicians. And yet we're not often taught, how do we do that? How do we go, how do we come back into relationship with our bodies if we've been disconnected from our bodies for, you know, for whatever reason? So, so as I'm saying that, uh, I'm going to invite you to take a deep breath. You know, just, just take a moment and just check in right now. What's going on in your, with your body? How's your body language in this moment? Are you contracted? Are you open? If someone were to take a photo of you right now, and, and you were then to analyze what you looked like, you know, what's, what's your body saying right now? You know, the way that your legs are, the way that your arms are, are they crossed, are they open? The look on your face, what's happening in your eyes, around your mouth? What, what, what's all that say about your internal state in this moment? And get, and get curious. Um, this is an invitation to come, to come home. It's an invitation to come back into, into your body if, um, if, if for some reason you've been disconnected from your body, recognizing that it's a slow process. It can be a scary process if we've been disconnected for, for a while. So I invite you into a process of observation today, tomorrow, you know, the next couple weeks or so. Observe yourself. Observe your own body language. You know, when you're having a particular emotion, stop and look at your body. How is your body expressing that emotion? How would people know just by looking at you what's going on? Because here's the thing is we're not lying to anybody. We are very transparent. Our bodies, again, our bodies are not lying. People know when we're not okay. People know they have, a, they have a felt sense of us, whether they're consciously registering it or not. Their body's picking up on, on, you know, on what's, what's, what's going on for us. In my book, Aggression and Play Therapy, um, there's a chapter on becoming an external regulator. And in that chapter, I, I talk about the importance of the relationship with the body. And I also go through in the book and give different exercises on things that we can do and things we can think about to begin to develop that relationship a little bit further. So if that's of interest to you, I invite you to read the chapter of that, uh, of that particular book. So once again, everyone, a deep breath. Your task to observe your body language, observe others' body language, just begin to see if you can notice a little bit more. Maybe even as a, as a little bit of an exercise, maybe spend time with someone and see if you get a felt sense of what's going on with them without ever asking them a question, how are you? Just to see, just to see. And then maybe once you have a, a, a sense of what's going on, maybe then ask them and, uh, and see if, if you, know, you were accurate. Um, see if you were accurate in what you were picking up on them. Now also recognizing that they may not tell you the truth. So, uh, so keep that in mind also, but it might be an interesting experiment 
just free you around your own intuition and around your own, yeah, your own attunement to yourself and to others. So once again, everyone, as I'm sitting here looking out the window, I'm, I'm thinking about you. I'm feeling you wherever you are in the world. I'm giving you a big hug. I'm incredibly grateful I, uh, for you. I, I record these, unless I've got a, a guest speaker, I record these just talking to myself. And I, I always imagine you when I'm talking to you. And today, you happen to be here in the mountains with me. So again, wherever you are in the world, um, big hugs. And I look forward to the next conversation with you. Take care.